Hello, welcome to my not very formal seminar presentation for the course Complex Systems instructed by Professor Derek Brockman. My name is Mohsen and in this presentation I will talk about a model of dynamic complex networks called Juju Jajaki networks. Um, it is named after the authors of the paper where they introduced a model to capture the emergence of communities in weighted networks. Um, if the terms sound strange uh, or not so much familiar to you, same as they did to me at first, I can tell you that you are in a good company. In the rest of the talk, I will try to shed some light on the concepts, so don't worry and take a breath. Uh, by the way, um, from now on, and for the sake of avoiding any tongue twist, I will say Juju Networks instead of Juju Jajaki Networks. This is the outline of the presentation. I will start with an introduction on basic materials of graphs and will elaborate upon some terminologies that are relevant to the talk. Then I will talk about a close to real story um, on social networks that might resemble the dynamic of Juju networks. And um, after explaining the mechanisms that shape the system, we explore parameter space using explorables. I will wrap up the presentation by a discussion on the results and conclusion of the importance of studying such dynamic networks. So, let's start with the most basic materials in a social network graph. A dot, called a node, could represent any social entity. It can be a person, a group of person, like a family or an organization, even it can be more broad, like a social or political group or a country. But it extends to the realm of other animals too, as they also show social behaviors. The next element shown by a line is an edge. We exchangeably call it a tie because it somehow attaches a pair of nodes to each other. Um, the two nodes that are connected by an edge are called neighbors. A tie can represent any sort of relationship, connection, friendship, or just communication between two nodes. You can consider them as more abstract correlations, for example, financial transactions, flow of information, collaboration, following a person on social media, liking a post, or even the spread of infections through network. A value to measure the connectivity of a node is its degree which is the sum of the edges that are connected to the node. So for this node, uh, for example, the degree is three, and for this one, it is four. In a friendship network, for example, interpersonal ties can be different in their strength. The strength of a tie can be proportional to qualities such as emotional intensity, the time length of the friendship, the intimacy, and the reciprocal services. Qualitatively, in an informal way, we use terms such as best friends, close friends, just friends, or acquaintances, and terms like that. Similarly, we can quantify the strength of an edge and assign a number to it, which is called the weight of the edge. We tend to show the weights by the width of the lines. These differences led us uh, to refer them as a strong or weak. So when a network contains different weights, it is called a weighted network. There is another worth mentioning term here, invisible ties. Invisible ties are connections that might be expected to exist, but don't. Um, like when we say a friend of a friend is a friend, we expect that there is an invisible friendship connection to them. Mm, but I bet you barely know all friends of all of your friends. The next term is clustering coefficients, abbreviated as CC. CC is the ratio of connections between a node's neighbor and the maximum number of connections they can have. 
I won't go to the details, but it is good to know that a large CC value for the node i means that it is directly friend with friends of its friends. We will, we will later see that if a node introduces its neighbors to each other, its clustering coefficient will increase, like from right to the left. Communities, by definition, are sets of nodes with lots of dense internal connections and few external ones to the rest of the network. Usually, if the network has a strong communities, nodes that belong to a community are somehow like-minded and have less tendency to um, correlate with other communities. In a social network, you can think of communities as a group of people who exhibit tighter connections, like a group of close friends, a group of master students that have been friends since kindergarten, Mm, community of students that play in university basketball team or those participating at the complex systems in biology course in 2021 spring semester. However, communities are not just to help classifying the nodes. An important thing to consider when it comes to communities is about the flow of information because our close friends tend to move in the same circles that we do. The information they receive um, overlaps considerably with what we already know. These communities are referred to as echo chambers because the voice of each member essentially echoes that of every other member. Uh, for further information, please check the following references and don't forget to give the echo chamber explorables a try. In the next couple of slides, I will tell you a friendship story of a group of friends that might capture the dynamics of Juju Networks. This is Joey. Joey has two close friends, Ida and Kai. And of course, he has more friends and acquaintances, yet with different level of um, intimacy. They also have their own friends, just a few of which are shown here. Due to some obvious reasons, Joey wants to find new friends. So he just installed a friend finder app called Finder and he is no friend with Ross. But you know, they are actually in level one of friendship because um, their friendship is new. So don't expect too much of intimacy for the new line. In the meantime, other friends of Joey try to help him find new friends. So Kai introduced May to him. Now Joey and May are friends. And thanks to the new friendship that May and Joey have established, they meet Kai more often and their ties to Kai has been increased. Please also note that May is a friend of Libby too. But because Joey is not such a close friend to Lily as he is to Kai, there was lower chance that Lily introduced May to him. Also, Nanny tried to help Joey find friends. So she told Joey that, I have a great friend. Do you want to meet him? His name is Otto. Otto, the Otto, Joey replied. He's already a friend of mine, but let's call him and have a gathering. And that made their friendship stronger. Um, considering the definition of invisible ties, introducing a friend to another friend can, regard it, can be regarded as promoting an invisible tie to a weak one. At the same time, it promotes the weak ties uh, of the involved nodes to a stronger one. Finally, after having many years of happy life with his great friends, Joey decided to move to a new place, so the node was removed as well as the ties that he was part of. Hope he can find great friends again. Although this story sounds a little bit awkward and maybe the actual processes taking place in the formation of social relations are undoubtedly very complex, sociology research has shown that they can be modeled by simple mechanisms. 
And then a group of researchers interested enough into the idea modeled this, these dynamics of complex networks. Interestingly enough, the name of the researchers who modeled such social networks start with similar sounding letters that when you put them together, you end up having this special name of Jujuji Jackie, whose translation from Japanese, according to Google Translate, means curse, evil, evil demon, which I guess it doesn't sound that much relevant to the idea behind it. Uh, but anyway, so let's see how they model that dynamic with simple rules and see how the system behaves. There are three simple mechanisms governing the dynamic of the network. I color coded them into two types of mechanisms, those that enhance the connectivity of the network and the one that reduces it. I will get into the details in the next slides. Focal closure or exploring is the mechanism that one node connects to another random node with the probability PE. This mechanism helps the node to connect beyond their communities and increase their global attachment. This is exactly the same thing that happened between Joey and Ross in our story. Cyclic closure, on the other hand, reinforces the links within a community. To do so, node J randomly selects one of its neighbors, say N, whose chance of being selected is proportional to their link weight WJN. And then J asks N to select a friend and introduces them to J. Based on the presence of link between J and the new friend, two possible situations can occur. The first possibility is when the three nodes were already connected and shaped a triangle, like Joey, Nanny, Otto. In this case, the involved links get reinforced by the amount of delta, which is a parameter of the metal. In the second case, however, the new link is established with a probability that is denoted by PL. This is the same as the new friendship between Joey and May. Additionally, the Joey Kai and Kai May ties get stronger. But note that in this case, because Joey and May have the freedom to decide whether they want to establish the link or not, the authors model this as a stochastic process by introducing the PL parameter. So in both closure cases, at least two links are reinforced by delta. Later, we will see how this parameter affects the community formation. The only mechanism that reduces the connectivity is the departure or isolation that can be modeled by deleting a node. That is to remove a node and all its belonging edge and replace it by a new node with the degree of zero. By doing that, the number of nodes is kept constant. A Juju network is dynamic, meaning that the properties of its elements change over time. It is weighted, which means that links show not only the existence of a connection, but also the strength of it. And at the beginning, a random network with rather few connections is initialized. By the passage of time, nodes get new connections, the edge get more weighted, and communities are being shaped. Thanks to the visualization, the degree of the nodes can be understood by its radius. The weight of an edge is proportional to the width of it, and also is color-coded. But the color of a node represents the local clustering coefficient of the node. Where in the inverted color, as you can see here, the lighter, the higher. So for example, this node has the clustering coefficient of zero because none of its friends are friends of each other. Whereas for these two nodes, whose degree is two, the clustering coefficient is maximum and equals to one. 
There are some other nodes with mediocre CC values. Now that we know about the model and hopefully know what to expect from the system, let's play some simulations. So to begin with, let's start with turning off the mechanisms. Initially, the network starts with a few random connections and connects the nodes with a degree of zero to another random nodes until all people have at least one friend. We need to wait for the last one, which is a little peaky or not lucky enough. Now the network has reached a stable point for this specific parameter. For the first try, I want to increase the exploration probability and see what happens. Remember, that's the probability that a person find a friend quite randomly, like using the Finder app in this story. What we see is that more people get connected to each other from different communities. As a result, they shape a very big component that is almost connected. Such phenomenon can resemble the small board concepts in networks. Let's initialize again to see the difference between the initial and final network features especially in terms of the degree and the size of the biggest component. Initially, they start from groups of two or three nodes, and the biggest component doesn't have more than roughly 20 members. By doing the simulation, you see how different groups get connected to each other only thanks to the exploration of the components. Now we only enable the local search mechanism and disable the global attachment. Remember that the local search mechanism reinforces the links within communities and also make new links that were already invisible to be established. Now that the links are getting thicker and turning to the blue, meaning that the ties are getting stronger. If I increase the local search parameter further, we see that the clustering coefficient increases and members within communities get closer and make the communities stronger. Now, if I increase exploration again, different communities connect to each other. Again, you see how the whole network is almost connected. Now it's time to see what the node isolation does to the network. To do that, I firstly will increase the focal and cyclic closure parameters to show you that if there is no isolation mechanism, the nodes just bunch up together and shape a very dense network, which is not that much interesting nor close to what happens in real social networks. That's why we need some isolation in order to bring some fresh air to the network. Uh, it's getting slower, so let me do it again. Now we have a big component in the network, and if I disable the closure mechanisms, no new link will be added nor get reinforced. While the isolation mechanism makes the node degree decrease down to zero. Here, if we combine all the simple rules together, we will have a rather complex behavior that encompasses the dynamics of social networks and the emergence of communities in particular. Um, they might show or have communities like this or these um, triangles or these shapes and um, also giant components that contain most portion of um, network members. Um, I won't spoil all the possible things that happen here so that you can enjoy exploring.
At the end, to see the effect of parameters on the structure of the network, we can see different uh, final networks for different parameters, as I showed by these two images. Some of them make small separate communities as a right snapshot, or they can have a big giant component with lots of members and some small communities. In addition, there might be some agents or people that don't belong to any group and are isolated. But specifically in terms of communities, the authors have shown that the link search reinforcement parameter delta has a lot to do with the emergence of communities. As they put nicely in these four figures, the more the delta, the higher the clustering coefficient. As we go from A to D. But why? Although it would have been better to ask this question at the very first slides, it is still not too late to at least think about it. So what is the importance of understanding such dynamic networks and the emergence of communities? I can think of some possible answers. Firstly, it is important to know how significantly the weights affect the properties or functions of networks. And we shouldn't forget that networks are not restricted to social ones. It's cliched, but still true that networks are ubiqu ubiquitous and you can see their trace almost everywhere. It is natural to expect that weights have an influence also on the, in on the formation of communities. Thus, this model, as the author said, opens a new perspective for studying such collective social phenomena as spreading, structure formation, and evolutionary processes. And, as already mentioned, communities can cause phenomena such as echo chambers or filter bubble, and the understanding of the reasons is crucial if one can help the network and replace confirmation bias by critical thinking. To prepare the presentation, I gathered information from these sources. Um, if you are interested to get more details, they can be a good candidate to start with. And at the end, thank you for paying attention. And if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please reach out to me, preferably via email. And don't forget to share it with your friends.